wherever you're tuned in celebrate yourself celebrate the next shuja around you and in your life in nine days time that is not this sunday but next sunday mm. we will be running uh, from huru gardens and from other parts of the country indeed <laughs> yes and it's imagine the whole country running at, at the same time it's kenya's largest single day athletics event it's back this year and it's bigger it's the 20th edition of the standard chartered nairobi marathon and uh, we all kick off from uhuru gardens on the 29th bright and early in the morning now if you don't get a chance to do that the virtual run actually kicks in on monday and you have an opportunity to put your numbers on the leaderboard your times on the leaderboard and then see where you reign come the 29th when the marathon is over will you run the 10k Will you run the 21 or will you run the 42? Whatever you do, register on www.nairobimarathon.com. With 2,000 shillings, you have the opportunity to make sure you run and also support the Future Makers program, which helps young people, especially girls and those with disability, to learn, earn and grow. The virtual run starts on Monday. Yes, it does. So that means you have from Monday till Friday, interestingly enough, mm. to then be able to run and put your times on the board. Run, 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 run. Clock it on the board and see how it goes. Mm. So you have this weekend to register, to download the app, and then have it on your on your phone or whatever, so that then when you run, you're able to clock your times. Monday as well, something big will be happening at 8.30 on Maisha Magic Plus, DSTV Channel 163, Go TV Channel 3. It'll be the premiere of a new show, Kenyan production, called Zari. Zari. What's Zari about? Hmm. Don't you want to know? Mm. So mm. it's a story of a young man who is confusing uh, people. Mm. <laughs> and uh, he decides that these two women, he's going to get their help. Mm. One falls pregnant. Mm. The other is going to help him treat this pregnant one in hospital. And it's going to unravel in ways that you would never imagine. What? <laughs> Well, it's a good, good, big time production. One of those big, good Kenyan productions. Something is happening to the expressway system, by the way. So I topped up yesterday mm -hmm. on to use the ETC system. I got a confirmation SMS immediately. Your top up is successful. Yes, Since ma. then, every 20 minutes, I get same message. That you've topped One up. has just come a minute ago. Your top up. Or 12 points were successful. Your account balance, yo, it's valid until this date. Please visit. Is there a place keep where you can check the balance? Mm? So has it, keep, has, it, has it kept multiplying? Uh, same the you same message more. comes, the same balance. Not The next message doesn't come with that you balance plus mm. 2,000. The same no, message. The same. Maybe there's a glitch in the system. Yeah, I think, clearly. I think it's yeah. the weather. Yeah, they should apologize to me by giving me like an extra value of the same. <coughs> Please, this should, it's, after all, it's Mashujade. Yeah, I mean, Mashujade, and this mm -hmm. is causing me distress <laughs> and inconvenience. Draining yeah, your draining phone battery. Sure. Exactly. With all these messages all the time. Let's have another conversation this hour. We'll talk about bo Beyond the Cut, the minutes of botched circumcision exercises and questionable vices. We are joined by two gentlemen in the studio. One of them is Julius Morage. Julius is a consultant in Family Matters and Leadership Trainer. And we have Dr. Stanley S.K. Kamau. Dr. Stanley Kamau is a program director at Noble Man Ventures. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Happy Mashujade. Happy Mashujade. Karibuni sana. Asante. We'll have this conversation shortly. First, let's hear the day's proverb from City Muga. Listen keenly, because we'll ask you your interpretation of that proverb. Yes, this is our final proverb from the Republic of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. A large eye does not mean keen vision. A large eye does not mean keen vision. Mm. Dr. Kamau, what do you make of that proverb? <laughs> I think the most important thing is to understand what is vision. Because mm. it's not, the eyes are for looking. <laughs> but the minds are for seeing. <laughs> so you see with your mind, and you look with your eyes. Mm. So you don't need even need to have uh, eyes mm. to have a vision. Mm. Yeah. So the most important thing is vision is the concept yeah. of the mind. Mm. Yeah. So like now you you have four four, four eyes. Doesn't mean that we see more. <laughs> <laughs> see more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. That's a good one. Hmm. City, what do you make of that particular one before we go to the next? Well, you know yeah. the beauty of your opinion is that you can't be wrong. 
Yeah. <laughs> it is your opinion. Yeah. Mm. And it is not just a good opinion, it's an informative one. Mm. Yes. Excellent. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Kila kitu. Ah, that's <laughs> idea. I'm a part of everything. Ah, that's idea. Julius. Yes. What's your interpretation of this problem? Uh, we know that uh, when you see something with your eyes, mm. you have to. You, you, the, the eyes will just help you to see, like Doctor said. Mm. But what you understand or what uh, what you get into your mind is what is uh, is now the vision. Mm. So uh, you may see something, and but you have a problem interpreting that what you have seen. That's why the the big the big eye is not. Uh, it's not Doesn't does not guarantee. mean does not guarantee that you have a vision because you have not interpreted it mm. yeah and, and maybe to add on that mm. this is from my personal personal perspective mm -hmm. 19, 1979 i was in class five mm -hmm. and i was leading other pupils to to perform before the parents mm -hmm. you know those gymnastics those primary school songs mm. and my mother kept looking at me because she was seated among the leaders mm. and because I was commanding, commanding the others to perform mm. when he went home my mother called me and asked me what kind of a person are you going to become then I asked her why because she said when I looked at you I saw someone who will become great mm -hmm. <laughs> and go far mm -hmm. that was 1979 mm. she looked but she saw so the eyes were looking but mm. the mind was seeing someone mm. who will be great I was translating something else yes and she said she, she she saw my destiny people are just seeing a boy leading others jumping and having fun but my mom saw someone who will go far and i believe today my voice is going far mm -hmm. this <laughs> 1979 was said very good yeah and here you are yeah what do you do dr kamau um i'm a training consultant mm -hmm. and i'm working with nobleman ventures as the programs director, uh, I'm a consultant in matters of leadership, life, and education. Mm. So basically, my work is to help people come understand and come up with informed decisions. You know, giving them information, mentorship, and above all, I'm also an author. Mm. I've written several books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, my work is human resource development and helping people discover themselves, develop themselves, and display themselves. Very good. It's called the 3D. Mm. Discover, develop, and display and yourself. Display. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Julius, what do you do? I also work with the Nobleman Venture. Mm. I'm a director. I'm also a trainer. Mm. I am a consultant in family matters and also training, especially the male, the, the male child. Mm. Um, so we, we, we build man of nobility at Nobleman's Venture. Mm. And also I do other things. I... I'm also in business. I'm also in construction. I do many things. Mm. Yes. You, you are multifaceted like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we want to have a conversation because you raised concern and you seem to be concerned about a trend. Mm -hmm. And this is when it comes to the male circumcision exercise. Yes. And you say that there's something that's happening that is not good. Mm. What is this? Um, in the male circumcision, many times when boys go through other circumcision, mm -hmm. there is a training they go through, mm -hmm. whether you have organized it or you have not organized it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, after circumcision, we call it the rite of passage. It is a new beginning. Even from the book of uh, from the Bible, we read about the, we are doing it on the, or even today they do it on the eighth day meaning it is a new beginning mm. so whether we plan for training or we don't plan for training there will be that room for training mm. and uh, when parents and when uh, the people who have gone through it are not properly alleged the other people who come and tell people now you are a mature man because you have had a gold the cut uh, you can now indulge in sex you can now uh, because you are mature you can drink because you are mature you can uh, have sex you can uh, uh, do drugs because that's when smoking is introduced that's when uh, many things happen because mm. there are those people who were before you mm. and they have gone through it and the the the, 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 the world is open 
for, the, for, for those kind of people, especially for those 10 days and even after the 10 days. Mm. So that's why we have come up with, um, with this training in Nobleman's Venture uh, because we did the research mm. and we found that most of our people, especially in central Kenya, they, have, they are in drugs, mm. they are in alcoholism, there is a lot of misuse of uh, sexuality. Mm. And we were asking ourselves, when did it start? And we realized that this thing started after the cut. Because mostly, the young men are taught, now you are a mature man. Mm. You can even have your own a small house. Mm. They call it a cube. cube. They, you do not st be staying with your mom. Now you are a big man. You will not be going, uh, will not do, be learning errors for your mother. Your mother cannot order you aloud. You are the one now who will be ordering you aloud. And probably when the parents think that their son is sleeping at home, the boy is out there uh, mixing with other things and probably entertaining other uh, young boys in the home. And uh, this is where we have lost many generations. So that's why we have come up with something that we're calling Build the Cut. Are we talking about botch circumcisions in terms of the physiological aspect that something may have gone wrong here? Um, and that is what is raising concern? Uh, or, mm. Mm, or. No, I, I, I didn't have an or. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just asking there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, the whole issue is uh, lack of understanding, mm -hmm. proper understanding, and there's a lot of misconception. Because when you don't know the purpose of something, ultimately you abuse it. So when there's no clear understanding of why the cut, why the circumcision? What is the whole concept of circumcision? Because circumcision is not just cutting uh, the front of the penis. It's, it's a whole human uh, development, both psychological, both uh, emotional, uh, and, and, and many other aspects. So not just the, the, the organ. The organ is just a mark that I'm, I'm, I'm getting into another level of life. And as he's saying, some people do it even at uh, eight days. So it's not, the focus should not be the cutting of, of, of the organ. But the issue is, have this person been uh, mentored, matured, and be able to understand the whole concept of manhood? Why is he a man? Because the, the, the man is not, uh, it's not the size or the shape of the penis. It's not the shape or, or the color of, you know, all that. The issue is, have this man understood, why am I a man? And why was I created as a male man? And what is my function? So, and that causes a change of heart, change of attitude, a change of mentality, change of perception, and much more building appropriate global uh, uh, values. Mm. Because the man we are talking about here is not, it's not a Kenyan, it's not a Kikuyu, it's not a Luo, it's not a Nigerian. It's a global man, mm. a man that can fit across board. Everywhere. Because now we are talking about the, the, the group of village. Mm. You know, I cannot, I cannot bring my tribalism into the group of village. We need to create a man that cuts across the whole group. Because the values, norms and beliefs and principles of humanity are supposed to be applied mm. across the whole board. So basically, we are, we are not just looking at uh, the issue of the organ. Which but is more than yeah, that. And, and many people have focused on that. You know, and, and we, have, we have actually built a huge industry, a huge uh, money-making industry uh, on that particular uh, event uh, than building a, a human person who will become an industrious man, a diligent man, a value-adding man in the global village. From what I hear you saying, yeah. that there is a process that eventually should you say, is marked by the physical act of circumcision. Yeah. Now, if you're saying there's this process that a young man needs to go through, in this modern day and age, is there a manual for it? Is there a curriculum? I mean, I mean is there something that somebody understands and knows they must go through before they get to that point, because you're not circumcised, and then you go through the lessons. Mm -hmm. You are taught the lessons, and then when, you're, yes, then when you're ready, then you are circumcised. Mm -hmm. Who is it that determines what is in this curriculum? Who is it who are appointed or selected to be the people who impart this knowledge? How do they do it, and how do you ensure 
that there's uniformity of understanding. Now, I'm being clinical here because I'm actually talking purely from an educational perspective and how we do formal learning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, this could be informal learning. Mm. And if it's informal, how do we go about it? Because what its intended purpose is stated as is good. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't achieve the intended purpose, then the good that you purport to want to see will not be achieved. Yeah. Yes. Okay, maturing a, a man is not something that you can do it in one week. No. It's something that... Uh, <coughs> it's a life process. It's a life process. Mm. Uh, the problem that we are having today is because the people who have the responsibility of maturing their sons or their daughters, uh, they are hands off. People are busy. Parents are so busy doing probably other things, looking for money, adding another plot of that or that, and it is not bad. But there is a primary responsibility that I believe God has given humanity that you have a responsibility or a responsibility of bringing up your own children and maturing them. And that's why if you look into probably in our traditions, there was that way of having that informal education where uh, men were staying with young boys and women were staying with young, young girls and they could develop them and uh, until they come now to the, to the time and a, a place of circumcision or the passage of, uh, of, light. of light. But today, because of uh, for the formal education, now uh, the parents, they are not having that time. Uh, we don't have those grandfathers and those uncles training their, their sons and daughters. Mm. And by the end of the day, you find that the man is not maturing as a man because you, the man can only be matured by a man. Just like we, we say, a doctor can only be trained by a doctor. An engineer can only be trained by an engineer. A teacher will be trained by a teacher. So for a man to be trained to mature as a man, he must be trained by a man. So we cannot say that we have a curriculum, although like now in the nobleman's venture, there are things that we have prepared that uh, will be training uh, our young people to become. For those who will be enrolled in our curriculum or in our, or, or in our training. Our training will not only be uh, those 10 days of circumcision. We, when one register will take down from now up to 18 years. That's the, the, the time of our training. And we will be bringing different people, uh, media personalities, uh, consultants, uh, CEO of, of companies, so that they can impact and, uh, and mentor our young people. You know what I'm hearing here is a conversation about raising the boy child. Yes. The conversation about a boy child has been there now for a while, you know. Mm -hmm. um, is the boy child losing the essence of the boy child? Is the boy child taking a back seat mm -hmm. um, as we talk about um, affirmative action and all? Are you saying that there are gaps in our society in how we are raising the boy child? Yes, there are gaps. There are gaps. Are those uh, gaps, gaps that people know and they are ignoring? How do we get to those gaps? Uh, okay. Some of the people that are raising their sons today, they were also not raised. So that's, the, the gaps start a long way. So it's a generational it, issue. It is a generational issue. It is not something How that many generations back would you go? Uh, like now it could go, uh, personally I'm allowed 55 years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, our father has raised us. Mm -hmm. There are those people who are between the age of 25 and 45. They cannot really say that they spent time with their fathers. Those are your younger brothers. Those are my younger brothers. Okay. They, uh, if your father spent time with you, why yeah. didn't you spend time with your younger brothers? It is because of these issues of uh, education and also there was an, a great emphasis of the girl child. I think we we overemphasized the, the girl child and we neglected the boy child. And also we have a problem of uh, the, the single parenting. Mm -hmm. We have a, pr a problem of single parenting. We have uh, people like in, in our community in the, in the central region whereby where the, the men have, uh, I think it is even because of this issue of the cut. Because you remember that after the cut, the, the people now are exposed to sexuality and protected sex and all that. So we have young people 
especially of my age, who indulged in sex and they, they contracted AIDS and all that. Others, we, we had early pregnancies. And by the end of the day, so that's where the problem started. Yeah. And how is that different from what was happening in previous years? In the previous years, they were one, they were Go not back, let's say, 60, 70 yeah. years, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. In the previous years, mm -hmm. they were not circumcising uh, very young boys. They were not circ circumcising the, the 13, 14, 15 years. They were circumcising over 20 years old. Those, those boys were already mature and they were ready for marriage. They were ready to go to war. They were ready to take, uh, they, they were already developed. So they, they were mature people. The problem is that when we, uh, we started in the formal education now, uh, the circumcision started at class 8 or class 7, and now it has even gone down to grade 6. You are still telling this young boy that now you are mature because you have undergone through the circumcision. Mm -hmm. So you still expose this young boy into the same things that we are exposing to those boys who we are ready for marriage. You remember, those people who are doing 60s and um, early 60s and 50s, they were doing it and then immediately after circumcision, they, they were getting married. Now, putting the same responsibility of a mature man to a 12, 13 year old boy, it is ridiculous. Hmm. It's like putting an engine of a lorry into a tuk-tuk. Yes. Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You expect the tuk-tuk to just bust. But basically, as, as he's talking about this matter, and I think the whole uh, issue is uh, people are negating their responsibilities uh, because uh, the whole issue of parenting has, has been taken like a casual thing. Just give birth and the child grows. And I'm sorry that December, kuzaa uh, siyo kazi. Kulea ndiyo? Kazi. kazi. And many people uh, get into parenthood without proper uh, uh, knowledge and skills. They don't have knowledge and skills. Mm -hmm. They just conceive or they just plant a seed. A child just is born. And they, 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 they get mixed up. So the issue of authentic, effective parenting uh, has been abdicated. And sometimes parents believe now that the child has gone to the school, uh, the teachers sh should take care of that. My job is to pay school fees and all that. So that aspect of not well nurtured and prepared parents has affected. And as because earlier on, uh, the people were in a community. There was a, there is a way the community did the whole thing. And the child be belonged to a the community. community. Our community today is the whole globe. You know, there's, we are living in a borderless uh, society. Mm. You know, one minute you can see me in Kenya, the next minute I'm in China, the next minute. So how, how have I been prepared? Do we have people that have that uh, global mentality? you know, raising a global child. And that's the focus of... Uh, but isn't that what schools do? Are the schools not preparing the modern-day child to be a global child, to be a global citizen? Uh, in, terms of, in, in terms of education. Socialization, in terms exposure of to the other children within you, exposure to other cultures through other media. In terms of education, yes. But in terms of norms and behavior, and uh, in terms of humanity, mm. that is res is, is, is the person is res prepared for that. Mm. So there's no specific uh, uh, tailor-made uh, program or course or individuals within the school that have been set there like uh, to, to, to mentor the boys. Mm. That my work is mentoring these boys, keeping watch over them. The others, I've been a teacher. I'm a, I'm a teacher by profession. You know, I'm going to class for mathematics, for history, and all that. So that's social interaction with this particular child, it's not there. When I was growing up in primary school, I remember there was a day on Fridays, we would have a sitting under a tree, and a particular man would come, one of the teachers, one of the male teachers. The girls would be put in another corner. Mm. And it, it went to a point that there was separation between the big boys and the smaller boys. And we are being handled by different teachers. And some of those teachers were real role models. You would say, I would like to be like teacher, so and so, you know, 
and and we we were we were developed values and that any time you'd see a, a, a person who is older of your mother's age or your father's age you give him or her the respect of a parent mm. If you get, you know, those, those days the, the, the vehicles were not as many as they are today. If, if you are seated in a matatu and an old person got in, you stood up, you know, you give the person the chair. If you are, you are on, a, on a narrow path and an older person was coming, you would step aside, you know, and give the person that, that aspect, respecting mm. the, uh, the, the grown-ups. That thing was developed and that is principle of humanity. Is a, is a principle of respect to one another. Do unto others and would expect them to. These days, you know, and they just they have, they have they have no value for and you. Others will laugh. Yeah. yeah. And we also taught if, mm. if if I'm a younger brother and have an older brother, if my father was not there, I gave him my father respect of the father. The father. And he took over to run the family, just like the father, father would. would. Mm. But you know those those principles of life and uh, operations that are supposed to be to to be used by human beings in the across the board they are lucky let's take a break 27 minutes to 9 we're hosting the two gentlemen in the studio this morning dr stanley kamau and julius Morage. they're from an organization called nobleman ventures but they're consultants on family matters and leadership and development we'll be back shortly good morning spice rights of passage for young men and what they should be learning and then what has become of society because of some of these gaps in what used to happen. Yeah. I want you to take us back, Dr. Kamau. That's why I want to... You, yeah. The communities that used to have rights of passage in whatever form, yeah. those that used to have circumcision and others that used to have other rights of passage, what was it that was marking that right of passage? Was it a training course? Was it um, a, a celebration? Was it you know, marriage identification of a bride for you, move yeah. on? Was it uh, enlistment into the military Today, then? Yeah. What was it? Okay. Every, every community had its own structured way of, of mentorship. Uh, for raising, for, if, even that aspect of somebody conceiving a child, it was not just a biological uh, outcome. It was something that was thought of, prepared for, and people looked forward to the conception. So both psychologically and emotionally and any other curry, if I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> people were prepared mm. and people looked forward to this child. Uh, because the technology was not there so much that people would know the gender of the child. But this child was waited for. People never just scattered their seeds, you know, like the farmer who went scattering. Men were very responsible on where their seeds are going to be planted. Mm. Because this woman I married, or this, this man that married me, was not just my wife or husband. He, he or she was within a global uh, uh, societal concept. Mm. So the child, when, when you had somebody is, uh, is expectant, it became a very big uh, celebration within the whole family and the community. Like, like, for instance, where I come today from Moraga, our governor has said, if you see any woman that is pregnant, uh, there's a special attention because the population is going down. The men that are there, the women are not getting people to... I think it's, there's another one even in Yeri. If a man is able to impregnate a man, a woman, mm. <laughs> they, are, they are being... So it, it, has, it was a very, very well uh, elaborate activity. So even when this child came, she, he or she found a system. Mm. There are women, there are young women, there are young men, and, and this person grew within the ranks from one level to another mm. up to the point that even when uh, the, the rite of passage or the circumcision took place this boy had even a mentor that has already been assigned to him and he, he or she entered into a certain age group mm. of and they had specific roles at that particular time but now we have reached a point where those have been disintegrated mm -hmm. there's a lot of disintegration and the, the, the environment we are living in now today is a global environment. Mm. You know, you, you cannot be able to say like, uh, for instance, in this country, we are living in Kibera. You, you cannot create a, a, a Kikuyu or Luo community within Kibera. Kibera is already a community by itself. 
So the children that are going growing there, sorry to just use that, mm. they should be able to be raised in such a way that they fit within the, con the confines of that community. And the only thing that can happen is that they're able to be uh, shown what are the basic human values that defines a noble man or a noble woman. Whose responsibility is that? Mm. That's where we are coming in. The people who are supposed to do that are the parents. <coughs> and the people that are either the, uh, the older age than them. But we have lived in a society that is disintegrated. Every man for himself. Hmm. You know, people are learning through either social media or any other. I'm not saying social media is wrong, hmm. but they, they are picking things that uh, are, are, are not necessarily uh, palatable with the, the society that we are living in. Mm. So it is the responsibility one of uh, like men. Men must take full responsibility that we have to raise a generation of mother men that are value based, mm. people that are stable, people that are uh, industrious. Like if the four of us here uh, the, the values that we have we should be able to see that are being inculcated to the next generation. Mm. So it becomes a generational transfer from one generation to another. And the values we are talking about here and beliefs are those that cut across. Doesn't that take away the responsibility or doesn't that gender say that we need to entrench this responsibility among parents? Yes. Uh, because if we talk about, because I mean, even yesterday in one of the conversations that we had, it was stressed upon, you know, just from comments that, you know, the boy child has then been neglected in terms of raising um, this boy into a man. Um, should the attention not be put back to family members, doesn't matter if it's a one-parent family, should that not be impressed upon parents? Uh, we're talking about then going back to a system whereby parents were responsible for the upbringing of a child. That's one part. And then secondly, I'm going back to that area. What was a rite of passage, such as circumcision, supposed to do from the very beginning? Yeah. And that that process still goes on till today but are we saying that we lost the very essence of the origin of this process um i, I think we need to all agree that, like that um it is the responsibility of the parents and in the confine of the family to bring up their own children you cannot leave that responsibility to the government or to teachers or to the society. It is it is your sole responsibility to bring to bring up your child. You know, we, we normally say when a child is born, this is a gift. It's uh, a blessing. It's a blessing. It's mm. a gift and it is a blessing from the Almighty God. And we also say that uh, that child is an inheritance. One, he inherits you when he is young. Uh, he mat you help him to mature and at the same time you are the one who will inherit that person later and it is very very important for people to remember for parents to remember it yeah. is good that you are you, you are making money wherever you are you are buying land and all that but when you grow old you have you go back to your children you go back to family the most important thing in this world is the family that even after we have work we have done all things in the evening we'll go back to our family or even when we retire we go back to the family if, if presidents if, if, if even presidents when they retire they go back to their family and their children take the care of them mm. so it is very very important for uh, mm. for us to understand that concept that the reason why you are bringing up this child is because one, one day. day you will depend on him mm. like me i'm staying with my, my with my mother-in-law in my house you know we, we, we cannot leave that responsibility to 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 workers mm. we can because she is now old she needs uh, all attention she has to stay with her daughter or some or a close member of the family so it is very very important and sometimes when i look at her i imagine myself when i will be 90 years what will be happening what mm. what will, uh, do i have children who will be able to take care of me the way I'm taking care of my mothers. You know, that's something that should sink into our mind. Mm -hmm. It is our responsibility to bring up our children because at one time they will also take care of us. And if you don't take care of that children, I normally tell people, if you don't take care of your children, that child will be taking care of you. You need a pamper. 
if you don't train them how to do it, mm. you will be the one who will be messing up with yourself. So it is very, very important for us to know it is not government's responsibility, it's not school responsibility, it's not teacher's responsibility. Actually, like the way the, the curriculum they are handling today, mm. they may not have that good time for mentoring your son or mentoring your girl. It is your sole responsibility. Uh, the other thing that um, uh, she asked is about uh, uh, what were the responsibility. Mm. Uh, it doesn't mean that because now you have been cut, you have been given some responsibilities. The responsibilities come with maturity. As one matures, that's how responsibilities come. Even cleaning, uh, washing ditches, you see girls learning to do that or learning to take care of their sisters or their brothers. Uh, it, 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 it comes with maturity. And that's why we are emphasizing that Parents should take responsibility to mature their children because they, when they mature their children, the, the children will automatically take responsibilities. No, you're making it sound like that they don't. Mm. Like parents have completely abdicated this responsibility to somebody else. To, somebody else. to some extent, yes. I can say that. To what extent? Fact. 40%, 60%? I can even go to 70%. You know, bringing to up a To whom have they left this responsibility? No. Uh, bringing up a child is not just giving them food. Mm. Anything that can be done by another person is not the great thing. Today, uh, people take responsibilities like buying clothes, uh, 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 paying, paying school, school fees, fees. Uh, feeding them. That's not what. Uh, that's what what is important because even uh, orphanage are doing the same. Mm. But there is that issue of presence, yeah. like for fathers. Mm. We have very many absenting fathers. Some even are still in the house, but they are still absent. They're absent. Their presence is yeah, not they are physically present, mm. yeah. but then they are very yeah. absent. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is a, a very important. Mm. Children, when they are growing up, they need the presence of their father. They, they, we also need to understand that fathers are the priests. Mm -hmm. in the house. Many, many fathers have left that responsibilities to pastors, to imam, to the, the, the spiritual leaders. To the priests. B but you are the priest. You are the first priest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are the first. You are the one who should show your children God. They should know you Awaken are their uh, awakening their spirituality. It is the work of the parents to awaken the, the spirituality. Mm -hmm. But now you realize that we have left our responsibility or showing our children their relationship with God mm. to other people. Mm. You see, there is issue of provision. Mm. Provision, when we talk of provision, many people think it is about bringing bread on the table. table. Mm. But provision is a two word which, which is pro and vision. It is the, the father's work to, to okay. show the vision. Okay. You are the one who is supposed to tell your child, when I, when I gave birth to you, Mm. This is what I saw. This is what I saw in Iran. But today, it is the teachers who are discovering through CBC who this child is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the father. Mm. He, 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 when, the, when the father gave birth to this guy, to this boy, he just, he actually, most of them, they even realize that there is a son, probably when the mother is five months pregnant or something. Some of even, even they don't know whether they impregnated somebody. So I, I tend to think, it is, we have left that responsibility. When I'm talking of servant, even I'm being, uh, I'm being nice. You're being very nice. Yes. Why do you think this is so? Why do you suppose mm -hmm. parents have left this responsibility? Because that is the reality. When why? 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 What has made them abdicate this responsibility? I think it is because of the competition. People want to go out there. They make money. People want to go there and uh, acquire more, more land. Uh, so are you saying that you cannot acquire land, accumulate more material things, and at the same time be a parent? You can. You can. So the question is, yeah. what has brought about this dislocation that you're speaking of? Uh, if, okay. if, if, I, if I would chip in, is mm. there has not been a deliberate uh, intention and a curriculum to, to, to train parents. If somebody is going to, take, to be a driver, for instance, he goes to a driving school. 
you know, if it's going to be a pilot, mm. you go to uh, uh, pilot school. school. To pilot yeah. school. Mm. If you go, if you are in media, yeah. you go to media school. Mm. Where is parenting school? So there has not been deliberate intention, one, by the society itself, mm. and two, uh, by the government. How did it used to happen? Nobody where, really where were the thought, schools? Yeah, where were the schools? Well, the, the Nobody schools really all, by the way, they've always existed. Voila. Parenting school yeah. has always existed. This is, is how it, there did it used it? to happen. It is. In fact, what is describing mm. is a result of parenting. Mm. Yes. <laughs> The, that what you're seeing being manifest is what they have learned. Mm -hmm. the, everything that we're saying. Mm -hmm. See, the learning process, forget the Western concept of formal and informal learning for mm -hmm. a second and ask yourself, mm -hmm. how do we learn as human beings? The best mode of learning is by example. Uh, yes. Observation. Yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah. We gather data by observing yes. and we're learning. Yeah. So, by, if by, by, by observation, uh, by listening, yes, mm -hmm. and by, uh, somebody by, by somebody deliberately taking initiative yes. to train you. So yes. there's that bit. Yes. There's the bit of observation and hearing and participating, but mm -hmm. then there's a deliberate system mm -hmm. that knew that you need to do this. Mm -hmm. Yes. The sitting down by the fire and the elders are ha telling stories, that was deliberate. Yes. yes. And it was training. Yes. yes. The walking around with the young man behind you and showing them this tree is good, this tree is bad, that was training. Mm -hmm. The beating up because you have done this and the other, to your siblings, that was training. Mm. So we still continue with the observation, but we left this deliberate bit. Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yes. So why did we leave the deliberate uh, and bit? And that's why we are emphasizing uh, here that um, actually, even in our organization, the greatest thing is not you bring up, you bring that child to us. The biggest thing to us is telling you, Father, <laughs> go back home. Go and take responsibility. Your presence is needed at home. You are, even your wife needs your presence. Your daughter needs your presence. Take time and have time with your daughter. There are some daughters who have never been taken out by their fathers. So the first date they get is from another man. And that's why they think that this man is of more, uh, values me more than my father. You know, probably a father can buy, uh, can take uh, another lady for, out for a date. But to, to their daughters, to some communities, it is a taboo. You can't go. How can you go out with your daughter? It's not good. How can you go out with your, with your mother? Yeah, you know, these are the things that we are trying to tell uh, the, the parents. Go back home. Your presence is needed. And you are, sometimes your presence will, will be, you'll be there. You even don't have to talk. But your presence will order things aloud. You see, because when children knows that our father is near, our father is hearing, our father is is observing, they they learn how to behave, and that's how we, uh, that's how we grew up in our in in our in our time of seventies and eighties. Mm -hmm. That's how we grew up. So the biggest problem that we are having today is uh, is that people have left their own responsibilities and they are attaching other things which are also equally important. We are not saying that those other things that they, we are doing, they are not important. It is important for us to come up here early in the morning. It is important that you have to wake up very early in the morning and you go to work. But it is also important for you to know that when I am coming back, my daughter needs to see me. My, my son needs to see me. We need to have a balance. What we are trying to say here is that we need to have a balance. Do you think that perhaps this situation that we currently find ourselves in, mm. at that a certain point in time, mm -hmm. was nudged along by a great need by our people to be westernized? Yes. So that the things that we are referring to, which were traditionally mm -hmm. the way in which we conducted ourselves, mm -hmm even when we assumed faiths that had not originally been ours, yes. but our traditions remained intact. Mm -hmm. Now, when the need to be westernized mm -hmm. became at the forefront, do you think, because even now, if you look at very many people who are younger than you or younger than I, mm. that seems to be the greater push to be westernized, to be global, if I may use the term you're using. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's one of the greatest things because uh, you know in in, in, in 
those day, those days we are talking of 60s and 70s people did not know much about the the global uh, or the world they they had no greater exploration we were just reading in the in the books uh, our fathers did not even have needs to go to uganda or even to go to uh, close the border they didn't have they that. didn't even have the need to come to nairobi they didn't even mm. have yes. the need to go to come to nairobi yes but now for us uh, we want to be out there yeah e even the uh, even as time goes by our sons they they have discovered so many countries they they, they can they are even interacting there is online training and all that you know there is even online teaching and all that mm. they, they can even graduate in a school in america while they are still in kenya <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah we didn't have those things as mm. when we were in school we didn't have those mm. you had to physically be in class mm. so that need of uh, being westernized or being easternized because still <laughs> also asia is also coming up very well mm. is uh is 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 an issue you know people just want to go out okay they, they, they just want to go to nairobi they want to go to the city okay yes Stanley, you said so we've got to accept the reality of today and the reality of today is that we are in a global village yes yeah. so you want us to still do things according to this car small part of the village but what do the other people in the other parts of the, this global village do yeah and that how do the parents in the west and the east bring up their children but, uh, basically thank you so much but what i uh, i'm alluding to or what i'm focusing on mm. uh like if you look at the sustainable development goals they, they, they cut across you know the issues of family and all that eh? mm. so we are talking about a deliberate intention like when it came to girl child empowerment uh, you know it was all across the globe one voice one deliberate action taken by women now it is the time that's we are calling it nobleman ventures there must be a deliberate group of men that will venture out and be able to raise a man that has a stand and has values that define exactly this is the global godly male man mm. because a child is born uh, but 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 a man is built is developed mm. you you are born a male biologically but you become a, a man. man by deliberate development and empowerment so there should be men and i believe this is the hour that the men across so that the man we construct on the face of the earth mm. is a man that can uh, exist well in nigeria in uganda everywhere because they are basic principles that of, lead to this that link to that and believes and values. Stanley, yeah. respond to those who are listening to you and hearing yeah. this man is just fighting and promoting patriarchy mm. uh when we were doing gao childhood we were not promoting matriarchal <laughs> matriarchalism so it's not it's basically we, we have two hands mm. You, you can't say because I'm developing this hand, this one should not be developed. developed. So but even when we go to the gym, we do training <laughs> on both hands, unless you have one. Yeah. But now we have two. We have the girl child and we have the boy child. We have the male. So if, if, if one, one uh, uh, my, when my father was, 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 was with me, he told me, if you fatten one dog, it will one day eat the other one. <laughs> so we have to fatten both. <laughs> both dogs you know mm. so we have to really empower both so that uh, none of them is left un unbalanced mm. yes and we have to agree that we are in already in a crisis because uh, the um, men are not there we, we have to agree no, wait, are, wait, just men are not where <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Where are they? Okay, let me I come can again. see four men in this room. Yeah, four, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. when you well, say they are, they are four males, yes. they are female. Okay. No, I'm actually saying They're men, not, not male. Uh, four men. Okay. What do you mean? What What I'm saying yes. out there, there is a great cry. For actually, the cry is, is even coming from the women themselves, because men. Mm. Uh -huh. Men are in the, um, men are in alcoholism. They are in drug and substance abuse. Uh, you you hear in Molanga, the governor is uh, saying that he will reward uh, someone in in where I come from. There is the same the same thing. 
<laughs> that's where I come from. There is an MCA who is paying. Uh, if so men are absent. Uh, yes. They could we, be, we have to agree. be seeing males. And, and that is males, a, yes. yes. And males that is a crisis. There. The containers mm. could be there. Yeah. Mm. And the content. And that's a crisis. And, we can and, have a container of a male, mm. but inside that content is, is lacking. Empty. It's empty. 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 Because it, it has lacked its understanding and, of it. As Antony for being here. <laughs> Dr. Stanley Kamau and Julius Morage from Nobleman Ventures. We've been talking about raising the boy child. Yes. Keep it here for more conversations. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.